Good morning, everybody. It's Morgan coming to you with the Daily Schlog number 31. I am back out here, Peach Valley, with the dog. It's a dog. <laughs> and uh, going for a morning walk, get her some exercise. And I am going to be shooting our live Facebook conditions report from here. If you guys don't follow us on Facebook yet, you probably should. It's pretty fun. We post constantly over there. Uh, and I do a lot of live things there that I don't do on YouTube uh, just because they're impromptu and stuff like that. I also definitely do a live conditions report every Friday morning, uh, usually somewhere around 8.15, 8.30. And uh, so that's what we're doing out here. So when we get to the shop today, we will be finishing up that 300XC to see uh, if we got the running issue sorted out. Uh, and then I will be taking apart that YZ250 cylinder to send to Millennium Technologies and showing you guys what the power valve looks like on that. And I'll give you kind of a tutorial on how we take them apart, clean them, and pack them up to send them because uh, I think we do a good job. Millennium sure appreciates it. Uh, and actually it'll save you a lot of money if you do it right. Because if you send them a cylinder that's all jacked up and dirty and doesn't have anything out of it and all that stuff, uh, they charge you a lot more, So, <laughs> which I don't blame them. Anyway, I'm breathing heavily because <sighs> trying to get in shape, trying to walk fast. Anyway guys, Without further ado, let's get to the daily schlag. All right, so done with the walk and uh, had a great hike out of Peach Valley. And since it's Valentine's Day, that's right, it's Valentine's Day, uh, I figured I'm gonna run into town and grab the kids, as in the guys that work for me, a uh, box of donuts and some coffee so you know why not and also so these were just in my car I want you guys to email me Morgan at Highland-Cycles.com and tell me why you want some stickers from Highland Cycles um, I will pick my favorite reason that uh, that you guys give me I'll whoever gives me again my favorite reason not necessarily the best but just my favorite reason that you want some stickers from Highland Cycles I will ship you a whole bunch of stickers. I'll get these, uh, get this coffee now and uh, get back to work. All right, we're at the shop finally after spending too much time goofing off this morning, but now it is time to disassemble and get this cylinder ready to send to Millennium Technologies. That is where we send all of our cylinders to be replated. Um, there's also US Chrome. Um, they're very good. I just like Millennium better. I've had a lot better experience with them as far as just communication and speed of things. Uh, anyway, I like Millennium. They do a great job. So if you don't take your cylinder all the way apart and get it just like super clean and ready to go, they will charge you more money. So let me show you what we do to get these things apart and ready to be sent off. It looks good. So this is the same bike that I put pictures up on uh, Facebook of um, the drool coming out of the pipe and saying that it was running a little rich. And really that was actually a joke. I already knew that this bike was burning transmission oil. I just figured it would make uh, for good content on the socials. So, but uh, yeah, Mike actually does hold his bike open quite a bit, which is probably why it's worn out. Um, but you know, that happens. So head off. That doesn't go to Millennium. Um, so then, heads off now. We're gonna take the reed cage off. Reeds look pretty good. Got a little bit of wear here, but I think they're all right. Get our cajita. Put our parts in. Keep it organized so now these studs have to come out and there's lots of ways to do it you can double nut them you can do all sorts of things right that uh, make your life easier harder whatever let me show you something one of the cooler tools I have so this thing is awesome it's a um, it's a metric stud remover and I, 
when you actually know how they work, I don't know why it's metric. <laughs> Maybe they just measure them in millimeter. But anyway, it's a stud remover. And inside there, you can't really see it with this uh, camera. But anyway, there's little cams in there that when you go either lefty-loosey or righty-tighty, it grabs a hold of whatever it's on and, you know, you can pull it out. So these things are super cool. I got them from Matco. I don't think there's a link anywhere on Amazon. Maybe there is. You can search for it if you want. But these are awesome. If you ever have to take studs out, this makes your job so much easier. Oh, guys, check this out. So... This isn't going to mean a lot to a lot of people, but this is really cool. This is an actual A cylinder. That's actually super rare. I'm going to have to ask Mike where if this is just the cylinder that came on the bike. Because Yamaha, um, when they build motorcycles, they, you know, they build them in a big factory, cranking out cylinders and things like that. And when they're done with them, they measure them. And they either come in A, B, C, or D size, and they're 0.01 millimeters different. And the A is the tightest one, it's the smallest one. So you really want to match it up with an A piston. Um, but then when you replace it, if you know it will have worn just a you know it's a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. You can put a B piston in it, and it'll still be nice and tight. Um, and so anyway, it's super. Back in the day, guys used to. When the new bikes would show up at dealerships, they'd go digging through all the crates and find the one with the A cylinder because everybody wanted the A cylinder. Um, so that's awesome that this is an A cylinder. It's super cool. I mean, we're getting it replated anyway, so it's actually going to be a better fit than even it was from the factory. But that's cool. Pretty rare thing. I don't know. I've probably only seen one or two of those ever. So. Take the pins out. These little pins need to come out because I want those out. And those are just locators for the head. But you can't put this thing back together without those. So the problem is sometimes if you don't get these little kind of things out, Millennium or US Chrome or whoever is plating it, they'll take them out and sometimes they lose them. And it's not their fault. So you got to get it out of there. So now I'm going to take this cover off and start taking the power valve apart. All right, guys, it's air filter time for the day. So Zach is working on that little bike right there, 65, and he pulled this out and he made the comment, and I love it. I don't think this air filter was ever oiled. <laughs> ha! Maintain your oil air filters, people. Look at this thing. It's dry, that lets dust through, and that blows motors up. You people. Seriously. Take care of your air filter. Now, the gentleman who owns this, I'm going to give him a hard time, but I think he just bought this bike. So I don't think it's actually his fault, but it might be. So anyway, and when you buy a new bike, check that kind of stuff, because that's the kind of stuff you want to look at and decide whether or not you want the motorcycle. So air filters. All right, so when I take the power valve apart, especially on Yamahas, I get a different cajita to uh, put the power valve stuff in, keep all the power valve stuff separate from everything else, because it doesn't really swap back and forth, but it's important that this goes back together correctly the first time. There is the inner workings of the Yamaha power valve. Um, I love YZs. Their power valve honestly is too complicated. <laughs> the KTM power valve is a better system. These work as far as like the bike running just fine, but it could be a lot better. This is when it gets important that you keep all this stuff in line because if you mix it up, it you you really can't finish putting it together wrong, but it just will save you a lot of time if you do it right. So you want to kind of keep track of where all this stuff goes. This rod is going to slide out, and then I'm going to put everything back on the way it came off. So sometimes you got to use a little heat like that may be the case today because usually people loctite these which is a good thing so if they do that you're gonna need some heat get the old blue wrench out and you shouldn't need a lot and 
And that is being a bear. Employ the impact. Yep, that's trying to strip that, so it's gonna get interesting. Welcome to real life motorcycle mechanics with Morgan instead of overproduced, sitting in a studio kind of motorcycle mechanics. This is real. All right, guys. So this is a trick that hopefully you'll never have to do, but if you do enough of this stuff, you will. When you get a stripped Allen, like one of these, a Torx bit can be your absolute best friend on earth. Um, you got to get the right size. You got to hope that it's, you know, everything lines up, but we're lucky. A T20 is going to work just right. And you're going to need something so you can hold it. You kind of get it like that. And then you're going to drive that Torx bit into the Allen. And hopefully, all that hitting on it will help loosen it. Man, that is tight. So, we're gonna blue wrench it more. There's probably someone on the internet right now going, that guy's a hack, I mean, he's using the wrong tool. Da -ba -da 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 -da. I started with the right tool. It didn't work. And the reality is, that's got to come out. Yeah, now we're going to have to replace that bolt and that's going to take even more time, but we're going to get it back way, we're going to get a new bolt long before the cylinder gets back. So, like I said, this is real motorcycle mechanic work, not studio. Careful, they're hot. <laughs> so now, we should be able to slide this rod out. Now, you have that all in line, you just chuck it in the box, you know exactly how it goes. Another little tip, guys, that, you know, if you're taking this stuff apart, if you put it in a box and you forget how it goes, it's not the end of the world. You can just go look up the parts fish, and generally, it'll show you where everything goes. Like, the pictures on these things are really pretty good on the fish, and it'll show you that that looking bolt goes there and all that stuff, so don't freak out. Get the main flapper out of there. There we go. And these can't be mixed up, left to right, doesn't matter. Honestly, if you send it like this to them, they probably wouldn't charge you anymore, but you never know, so I like to clean it really good. And so I go put it in the ultrasonic spa with some Fabuloso, cook it really good, get all the oil and stuff off of it, and then I package it up with a piston to send it. And I'll show you how we do that to keep everything safe. Taking a quick break with the dog and her brand new Frisbee, thanks to Lance Bach, who was so kind um, because his dog <laughs> uh, had one of these things and Leia really liked it. And so Lance brought us one. It's super, super kind of him. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lance. Leia loves it. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna play a little Frisbee out here, get her some uh, exercise, get me some fresh air. And then we're gonna get back to work. All right, got the cylinder out of the ultrasonic cleaner. It's nice and shiny. It looks really pretty good. Now, when we get it back from them, it's gonna look brand new because they're gonna be blasted and all the other things that they do. That thing is all ready to go. Let's go get a box. I'm gonna box this thing up. When you're boxing stuff up to ship out to a cylinder repair company, whether it be Millennium or US Chrome or LA Sleeve or anybody like that, Start with cleaning the cylinder, getting it stripped down to just nothing, so there's nothing for them to lose, and they don't charge you more, right? Then we're gonna get the piston. So you want to send the piston with the cylinder always. Now they'll actually do it without the piston, and they'll you know get it close, and by close I mean really close. But you really want to send this with it because then they'll make it perfect exact dead on match to this so but you want to take rings and clips and pin top end bearing out right because you don't want anybody to have a chance of losing that 
Then you put the piston back in the box. Then we're gonna get some packing. So you want lots of stuff around it to protect the cylinder on its way there. You don't want any chance of somebody else botching the job you're doing. So I, you know, we get stuff all the time with all the packages we get. So take it, wrap it around lots and lots and lots of times. Then we're gonna put more paper in here first before we actually put it in. Kind of push it off to one side. We're gonna take a piston, push it in there. There we go. You just wanna do a good job because a new cylinder is like lots of dollars. I think 700, I don't know, more dollars than you wanna spend. So make sure it's nice and good. Also, Definitely want to get some sort of insurance on the packaging as you send it. There we go. Now, I'm not going to tape yet because Zach is making a work order with Millennium. Uh, I really like that about their setup. You go to their website, you fill out all the information on the bike and everything. Um, you hit send and it fires that information off to them. Then you get a printable thing, you print it, you put it in the box and send it. So they have like two ways of making sure that they get it and they know where it's going. So. Here we go. The new Zach is working on big iron today. 65 and a 50. Yeah. Most important bikes in the shop, actually, because we want more kids riding dirt bikes. Time to eat a little bit of lunch and then get back after it. So Zach, working on the big bikes, discovered something here in the carburetor. The, um, on these style carburetors that have the seat that is replaceable, like that, and you clean everything and it feels good but it still leaks gas it's usually because that o-ring right there has worn out and this is a little this is a little makuni i don't think any of the keyans have that replaceable one you guys comment below if there's a key in carburetor that has a replaceable seat like that there probably is but anyway all the makunis kind of modern makunis have that so and this is the ktm 65 2013 or 15 or any something newish and uh, so anyway these o-rings should all pretty much always be replaced if you're gonna bother cleaning the carburetor um, so we're gonna get one of those and we're gonna fix this thing for good all right so the struggle is real with the KTM 65 <laughs> we are it is just not running right it seems to run pretty good with the choke on and not at all without the choke on and we've been through the carburetor numerous times, jetting's right, everything's clean. We even had it with the main jet out by accident, laying in the float bowl. Zach. The, uh, <laughs> so anyway, uh, and so now we're gonna pop the stator, uh, the flywheel off and the stator off and actually look at the seal, because I have a feeling the uh, main seal might be leaking air, because it just doesn't make any sense. It's like it's super lean. Um, and the compression feels good with the kicker. So we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna find out. What the hell? This is a hammer in his toolbox. <laughs> that is legit. Do not mess with him. <laughs> Dude, that's gnarly. I think we're shoeing horses and stuff. <laughs> I don't even know. That a garage sale last year. Put a handle on it. It's my hitting stuff for the hard hammer. Yeah! Zach just told me this is his hitting stuff real hard hammer. I like that is awesome. I would call it a persuader, but I like that name even better. Wrong. There we go. Wow! Yay! So that hitting probably is what did it. Like, sometimes you just gotta shock it. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, we found our problem. Most likely, at least. So, you see the wetness? That is definitely leaking. So, what's happening is that the air is going in. <laughs> that way uh, it's also blowing some oil out and uh, oil and fuel out but I love two strokes y'all know that but 
one of the downsides of a two-stroke is that you can, uh, if this leaks, if this main seal leaks, uh, it runs lean. And I think, hopefully we caught it before anything bad happened to the motor, because if this thing leans out, it leaks really bad, it leans out and it'll smoke this motor. So we're going to find out if we can get one of those relatively fast and fix this and get it back going quickly. The good thing is we can do it from outside the motor. Uh, we don't have to split the cases to replace that. So, wee -hee. So yeah, stick with us. We'll see. I don't know if we're going to have it today. Probably not. It's almost, day's almost over. Um, but yeah, stick with us so you can watch us hopefully dial in a KTM 65 relatively easy. So, every now and then the blind squirrel finds a nut. And we do have a seal. I'm surprised, honestly. <laughs> but we got one. So we're gonna pop that sucker out of there and put this one in. So we got the seal out with a seal puller. Right now we're kinda smoothing out this. The seal puller kinda dinged that up a little bit because it's just hard to get that out. So smooth that up a little bit, it'll be just fine. But while this is off, you wanna take a good look inside there and make sure that that bearing doesn't look blue or red or you know anything but silver <laughs> uh, so it doesn't look bad at all the other thing is you want to grab the hold of the crankshaft and try to move it up and down if it moves up and down you gotta split the cases and replace the bearing but it doesn't so that's good um, we're looking really good here so now we're gonna get a socket that is the right size of that and we're gonna tap this home so when you're tapping this in like this you want to be really, really careful and go real nice and slow and make sure that goes in nice and flat uh, onto the motor. Um, because if you get it cocked at all, it'll leak. Also, if you go too far, then you got to pull it back out and start over again. So you just want to be, just take your time, right, on this. Just take your time. And if you can find a socket that's just a fuzz bigger than the seal so that it, it hits the case, when it goes flush, that makes your job even easier. And this one is, so we should be good. What happens? The moment of truth. Come on, so I did a great job just now. <laughs> Yay, look at that. Morgan, you have to put the spark plug cap back on. Nice. Keep finding things that should be it, and that's not it. Again, welcome to real life motorcycle shop, not fake studio shop. Hmm. Thanks for joining us for another slog, guys. Uh, another great day here at the shop. That dumb 65 is doing what motorcycles do sometimes, and it's not always that awesome, but that's real life. Uh, so we'll keep going, keep trying to figure. We'll get it figured out eventually. It's uh, getting better with uh, making it richer but it's weird because it's from here so it shouldn't need different jetting but I don't know we'll figure it out thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it if you think we've earned it go ahead and hit the subscribe button that would mean an absolute ton to me um, also most importantly I want you to get out spread the gospel of two wheels and find some time now that the weather is getting nice and the dirt is drying out you better go ride your dirt bikes Let's go.